Awesome. All right. So we're not going to do the intro switchover this time. So, uh, you know, we could do this. Um, we can both like do, do like they do on the, um, you know, when they, they put up one of the esports players stats, they appear on the screen and they're like, okay. <laughs> That'll be our official start in two minutes. Do I have to like dab or do the, <laughs> that's up to you. Well, I just did both of them, so. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Can we just go? Like, we're yeah. here. Let's just go. Yeah. This is the last show of the year. Oh, my God. Like, okay, let's, let's start it off right then. Heads down. Coming up in three, two, one, go. Hello, and welcome back to... The lagging ball that? stream. No, you totally nailed it. Good. Hi, everybody. This is the LB stream, episode 57. We are talking about New Year's resolutions. Pickles. Hi, fucking, Fish. Hello. Fucking so uh, innovative. Fucking last show of the year. What should we talk about? I know. New Year's resolutions. Cause fuck. Well, we've never been accused of being creative, so... That's I true, but we have been accused of much worse. Yeah, I'm gonna mute myself here. Can you uh, can you still hear me if I'm muted? Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. You can still hear me. Yeah. <laughs> that didn't work at all. <laughs> Woo! Anyway, I'm just gonna open this uh, drink. Fuck it. What? Are, hey, man, this is a low budget show. One of my New Year's resolutions is not to stop opening drinks on stream. What? Not to stop. Oh, I get it. So anyway, hello, everybody. Welcome to the LBS that stands for the lagging ball stream or lagging bullshit. We don't know. We were going to change the name a while ago, and then I just kind of didn't. But I still might. Um, so many hey, changes this year. resolution number one. I'm going to write these down. OK, good. On some imaginary paper. Uh, but this is not the lagging balls podcast. This is not lagging balls proper. On the lagging balls podcast, we talk about Blizzard games, and that comes out every week. And it is not visual; it is only uh, audio. Uh, but this is just for us to hang out with you guys and talk about bullshit, because that's what we do. Besides talking about Blizzard stuff, but while we do talk about Blizzard stuff, we also bullshit quite a lot. Uh, so if you like what we do here and also Blizzard games, you might enjoy the podcast. But this is not the podcast. It's not. Not at all. Same not level of bullshit, all. different channel of communication. Yes. You can find the actual podcast on iTunes and Stitcher and SoundCloud and Spotify and various other uh, websites that host podcasts without telling them. <laughs> <laughs> without telling them. Without telling them. We're big in nine countries. I know that seems like impossible and i agree what like at the end yeah <laughs> just waiting for you to like no that's it <laughs> i don't believe it either but there you go i mean by big you mean we are listened to in at least nine countries right no we're big in nine countries Fair. We're, on, we're on the top 100 list of most popular video game podcasts in nine countries that's bitching yes it is that's fucking sweet as fuck we have I, no business like, <laughs> Oh, I know. I know. I know. It's fucked up. But like that counts, you know, for all video games, all of them. So. That's cool. I don't mean to brag, but it's just like I've been seeing a lot of posts on Twitter lately of people like, you know, talking about the things that they were proud of this year. And I think that's probably a good thing because like a lot of people look back on the year and it's like, oh, fuck, that that fucking sucked. You know, like today at work somebody's like well i can't wait for this year to end this year was so bad and like all around the room everybody just kind of hangs their head and goes yeah it was oh and i was like oh man you just immediately agree with all that but it like, that's was a, true that's this year was terrible <laughs> was it i don't know i mean i didn't have the best year ever a lot of cool shit happened to me but i didn't either but it was certainly not among the worst of years no it's good for me but i mean that's a that's a very you know Subjective thing, right? Yeah. All I'm saying is, like, instead of, like, dwelling on how bad you had a time this year, uh, maybe just, like, focus on the things that you're proud of and that you accomplished and stuff. So 
I don't know, I think it is a good idea. I'm proud of this hat. I'm gonna focus on that. Okay. You do that. Proud of this yeah. pickle. I'm gonna focus on that too. Uh that's good. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh yeah, New Year's resolutions. Have you ever followed followed through on one of those before? Let's see. Yes. Um I I have. I've used them in the past to like start new habits that were not the like the the quintessential ones that everybody does like tries to like working out and eating right. I can't do those. Um, I, I need to resolve for that anyway because I need to motivate myself in some way. Um, but I would not say I was successful in those in the past. But I have started new habits and new hobbies in the past by starting them as a resolution. That's cool. I think the thing about uh, trying to change your life with a New Year's resolution is like, I think most of the time people are just like, okay, it's the beginning of a new year, it's a clean slate, and that alone will be enough to motivate me to change my life. Mm -hmm. And like, that's not right. gonna, you know... But, there's there's literally like you're gonna you're gonna celebrate New Year's one night, go to sleep, wake up, it's gonna be the new year, and you're still gonna be the same person that you were the day before. Like nothing changed except for the date. That's it. And like to start doing like some people, yes, can just fucking go cold turkey and stop eating crap if that's their resolution. Some people can absolutely just start going to the gym and keep up with it. Uh, but that's not the the rule. That's like that's like outside the norm. That's that's an anomaly yeah. in human beings. Uh, if you if you want to change your life, like you have to set yourself up for success. Like if you are going to, I don't know. A few times I've made resolutions to lose weight, and I'm just like, I'm gonna start on fucking January first, and I'm gonna work out, and I'm not gonna eat any crap, and blah, blah. no, <laughs> fuck no. But like, if I really, really, really wanted to change, I would have been helping myself out by like, you know, joining the gym or giving myself some really good incentive or like buying some at home gym stuff or buying a really cute workout outfit at least or something, you know? Ooh, a cute workout outfit. I need me one of those, but I get Honest, it. I honestly get it. though, like if you buy yourself cool equipment to wear when you're working out, it motivates you to work out. Eh? Uh uh, what is that? What is that? The new Fitbit that I got for Christmas. Ooh. Totally in line with that. And I'm totally motivated because I've got this constant reminder strapped to my fucking flesh for one. And for two, because it, you can set it to make reminders and such. I mean, that's really handy. Yeah. Does, does it scream at you? I'm like, hey, hey, you little piece of shit. Get off of the couch. <laughs> Get off of the couch. If it does scream at me, I definitely want it to have an Italian accent. Right? And then it just like and swears. keeps buzzing and buzzing and buzzing until your hand goes numb. And like you can't even hold on to your dick anymore because you're just like, I'm trying to beat off. And it's like, let it go. <laughs> I don't let the hard right is up, but it's only because you're wanking. Yeah, wank hard. <laughs> Make it work for you. <laughs> It'd be funny if it like it vibrated so much that it made your hand go like this and then it started speaking Italian. Yeah. Why am I making this gesture though? It doesn't it make any sense. Motivates in Italian. It actually it clenches your your muscles in your wrist just enough to make you immediately go like this. So you're like Yeah. Hey! It's in my feet a bit. Cool. It's in my feet a bit, it's a hard. Um Yeah, no, but I mean like the some of that stuff is the motivators, right? There's also like, I, I don't think there's any one thing for everyone, right? I think that everybody has different different motivators. This is um, this app that I'm pulling up on my phone to show you guys is called um, Fabulous. And uh, this is an app that helps you develop um, uh, new habits, basically. So it's kind of aligned with that sort of thing. But it starts with like super simple things like drink water when you wake up and then it set, has you set in a reminder then the night before it reminds you it, and it tells you how to equip yourself for success like put a bottle of water next to your bed so that when you wake up it's the first thing you do put it next to your alarm or whatever you know so it's things that like 
and it is actually telling you the psychology behind it while you're doing it to help you develop that into a habit. And so far, like some of those things are actually starting to stick and I can see some of those results happening already. So right along with what you're saying, I kind of have started some of these things outside of the calendar date of the first, which is arbitrary anyway. Right? Hey, you're arbitrary. Hey, hey you're arbitrary. Hey, you're fucking arbitrary over here. One time when I was a teenager, I was sleeping in my bed and it was summertime and my mom bought cases and cases of Nest tea, iced tea and mm. cans because they were on sale. And my mom always bought stuff in bulk when it was on sale because she's thrifty. Anyway, so I had some cans upstairs because I hated going downstairs to go get drinks and stuff in the kitchen. So I was lazy and I, have, I was playing well upstairs in my room so I didn't want to go anywhere so I was sleeping and like you know when you fall asleep in, in like a hot room or it's summertime and you're wearing too much clothing and then like you wake up and you're like oh fuck I'm hot you know and like you like <laughs> tear off your clothes and shit so I fucking did that and I was like god damn it's hot in here and then I was like oh fucking wait so I like reach down and like I pull out this fucking uh huge cock now uh this can <laughs> uh I'm sorry I got all blurry this can of nest tea that was under my bed and I like crack that shit open and I chug the whole thing. Cause you know, it's not carbonated. Right. So like, yeah, yeah. Uh, that is part of the reason it goes down so smooth. Which exactly. So I drank the whole fucking thing and it was so refreshing. It was like a fucking nest tea commercial. And the whole like, <laughs> the fucking thing was like look fucking warm, dude. Were you like, I... <sighs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking yes. And so I don't know, like this isn't an interesting story or anything, but it's just like something that's always stayed with me because it was just like really convenient and also like really delicious. And I told my brother about it. And then like a few nights later, he did the same thing because he started taking cans up to his room too. Nice. So, I, I don't know. That awesome. was, yeah. I, you know what, it, this like to this day, the things that are like. To this day. To this day, the to this day, that stick in my mind is the most refreshing beverages I've ever had that I, that I specifically remember was one as a child um, having like I have like this very specific memory of of like a glorious day at the beach when we lived in California and um, I don't remember the specifics other than that I was bodyboarding and I had this year this year boogie board that I absolutely loved and it was super 90s super 80s colors and like uh like I just had a blast and it was like I think it might have been the first time that I like actually like boogie boarded and it was a fucking blast and I was just this little thing and I you know it was like the rush of being propelled forward on the power of a wave and it just like made me crazy with delight and I must have been I must have been in like you know, six inch high waves or something like right by the shore. Cause I was a little kid. Like I wasn't doing anything dangerous in the least, but it was thrilling because it was, you know, that sort of thing is relative. If the water's up to your chest, that's thrilling enough for you. You know, like, <laughs> like it doesn't need to be like deep in anybody else's terms, but yours. Right. So I remember like super, <laughs> that was a good one. Uh, <laughs> so I, I like, I was out doing a bunch of that. It's really tiring. It's, you know, it's really hot. It's on the beach, whatever, in California. And then I remember at one point running back to, you know, the towel setup where my mom was. And we had brought a cooler that had ice in it. So I had some Capri Suns in the fucking cooler. Oh, Fruit punch, which to this day, just the taste of that reminds me of the beach, partially because of this day. But I totally did that thing where you like, you run up and you're like, <laughs> and then you start... Okay, bye, mom. <laughs> and then you go run back off to like, you know, do little kid stuff. Yeah, it was so amazing. You, like, you sucked a whole pouch. Sup I gave it. I gave the pouch the suck, oh, and it was it? supremely refreshing. And I remember that, like, as part of the whole what? You emptied it. You emptied those <laughs> mugs. Why? Why are you trying to take this beautiful thing from me, Fist? <laughs> <laughs> you sucked it dry right in front of your mom. I did. And she approved. Hey man, at that point, all that's all that's all that you can do. Like if if you realize early on that your kid's one talent is sucking the juice out of an entire pouch of the son, you gotta be proud, right? Because like <laughs> you've peaked. 
This kid's going places. <laughs> or not at all. The other one was uh, I was uh, doing work on my grandmother's garage. They needed a new roof, so it was like tarring, helping tar the roof or some shit like that. Something. Pretty sure it was tar because it was like giant black whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I was just waiting for the response on that one. But then, uh, uh, then like one of the guys who was helping us out went into the, the house to get some beverages and came back out with like a bunch of like ice cold Coca Cola classics, and that was like supremely refreshing. Man, when it's I was like a kid, midday sun, you know. Yeah, when I was a kid, like soda was the most refreshing fucking thing. Yeah, yeah, totally. And now it like it makes me diabetes the. <laughs> I hate when things make me diabetes-y. I was fighting a Brigitte earlier called Diabetes Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing Chungus. I, I'm I'm trying to be a fucking, uh, I'm trying to be a wrecking ball man, you guys. I'm That's having awesome. so much fun. He's such a fucking huge Chung. <laughs> <laughs> Is the rest of this cast going to be Chung related? Huge fucking Chungus. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, so back to New Year's resolutions. Fucking, yes. like... Enjoy our beverages more. <laughs> yeah, let's find some delicious beverages. How about, how about we count all of the empty cans on my desk, shall we? <laughs> One, two, three, four, Jesus. and five. That's it, though. For now. You, you, uh, you're like diva. No, I'm like Asmongold. This is gross. But it's okay. You know, like, it's fine. I'm going to It's fine. Because you know what? Like, sometimes when you get a job and then you've got, like a, like, a bunch of fucking podcasts to do and you have a really long commute, like, you don't fucking want to clean up, you know? Mm-hmm. You'll clean up eventually, just not now. Ever. Right, yeah. And yes, but definitely buying buying in bulk chat. Don't worry about that. She's oh, on yeah. she's on that. I'm on it. I you know, I'm not the greatest adult, but I can still adult, you know, kind of. Yeah. What but else yeah. so what else you got in mind? What is it like do you have like a baseline of like a couple things you've already considered for New Year's resolutions? Um for New Year's resolutions, uh I want to learn starcraft i i know all about it but i i just don't play it and i i would like to um and a lot of that has to do with you know getting into esports so heavily this year and last year um i would just it's always better to uh play the games and then you know uh i don't know just like you can watch an esport and people can explain it to you and you're like okay i get it or you can like play the game and then watch the esport and like know exactly what's going on because you've been there, you know? So yeah. let me fix the stream real quick. One sec. Go back. Okay. So anyway, um, learn Starcraft. I need to play more video games. I used to play for hours and hours and hours and hours a day. And obviously I don't have a lot of time, but I just, I need to figure out how to work more of that in and also sleep. I don't know. Uh, what else? Oh God, I don't know what's happening with Thorn. Uh, we're trying out a bunch of new stuff. Um, that was another sort of resolution for the uh, for the podcast. Like we're going to be um, what race? I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to think about it because I haven't thought about it yet. But um, for the podcast, we're going to be doing redoing some bumpers, probably the intro. Um, Oh, he's back. Um, I mean, not too many changes with LB. Back. That. Hi. I fixed it. Thank you. I was just telling everybody that we're going to be changing around some bumpers and in the intro for LB, but like nothing more than that, really. Okay. Yeah. But for me, um, I don't know. I, uh, I think I would really like to pick up some kind of physical activity. 
like uh, like a workout class, like yoga. Like... No, well, my friend does jujitsu, and he keeps like asking me to go and do jujitsu with him, and I feel like like going to something with a friend who already knows how to do it and will uh sort of like motivate you and keep you accountable like ask you to do stuff is probably a really great way to actually see something through so, I'm, so I'm thinking yeah. maybe that's a good thing the only problem is though is that it's in new york in the morning so i'd have to get uh to new york even earlier to go and do jujitsu before work so i, yeah. I don't know I don't know, but I really want to because I've always wanted to learn a martial art because I would really, really love to fight somebody someday. Well, you are moving closer to your job soon though, right? Yeah, in a few months. So that, that'll help. Yeah. For sure. Man, I would just... Make it more would, realistic. <laughs> I feel like just knowing that you could probably kick the shit out of somebody would probably make me more confident, you know? Hell yeah. So I, don't, I don't actually have to do it, but just knowing that I could if I needed to, probably... Yeah confidence booster that makes perfect sense to me absolutely what about you do you have any new year's resolutions yes for one to get this this stream situation streamlined well we're trying streamline the stream but yeah um uh, just because you know it's um the i feel like if you are doing a one person thing then you have a set of issues that you have to address on something like this. But if you were doing a multi-person thing, that adds a few extra layers <laughs> of things to address on a stream. And we're so close. Like Techies hooked us up with this really ball and ass template. And um, like, um, you know, we've got a lot of the bells and whistles hooked up and, and rolling, like the, like the names of the cheers and like these really cool effects when people do things and like, not, did you ever think that we would have that shit on our? Yeah. Neither yeah. did I. No. So Techies hooked us up with that. Um, I uh, there's like I feel like there's some things that I want to start doing like more of uh, personally. Like reading is one of them. Like I I haven't been into books too much for like a while. Like for the last couple of years. It's mostly just been like crazy amounts of work and then coming home and um, being tired as hell and either trying to nap or game and then pass out kind of thing. Or like, you know, I think, I think there's like some, some new habits to develop um, in addition to like healthy things that are healthy for the body, also healthy for the mind kind of thing. Right. right. New year, new you. Right. Uh. <laughs> but I've already started some of that shit. Like I joined a book club at work. Good for you. Yeah, we're reading "The Heart Goes Last" by forget the lady's name, the awesome. one who did uh, uh, fucking. I will tell you in a second. I forgot. Is it a porno book about porno? Yes, totally, absolutely. The first internet porn that I was ever like trying to secretly look at without anybody knowing, because my family PC was in the dining room. It was actually just erotica. Like it was just like this website where people would submit their erotica and shit. And like, it was so cool. Cause like, unless somebody came and sat next to me, which never happened, fucking, I could, I'm just looking like I'm studying or some shit. It's like, Oh mom, I'm just studying. <laughs> but actually I'm just sitting here getting a little kid boner. <laughs> I read all sorts of weird shit too. Cause like when it's fucking like, like free reign erotica online, yeah. like back in the day, that's fucking, you could, you could say anything, anything you want. And I read it and it was fucked up, but actually it was probably best that that happened, honestly. Cause like, yeah. it kind of prepared me for all of the visuals that I would see after I realized that I didn't just have to read shit online. I can actually look at shit. Mm -hmm. Anyway, what were you saying about a book club? <laughs> <laughs> It's called The Heart Goes Last, and it's by Margaret, Margaret Atwood. So that was, the, they, like, I joined this late. They had already had that, um, like, club going. So uh, I joined, like, later on, um, right as they were starting the actual book. So it was, like, kind of perfect timing. I had to, like, catch up, like, kind of bust through the first few chapters right before, like, like two days 
before a meeting about it, but it's good. Um, it's like mostly younger people, which is unusual for a company because most of them are a lot older. So that's why things like this haven't really existed until recently. So that's good. Yeah, I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying to make uh, more friends at work and, um, you know, because again, it was mostly older people and not a lot of people that I had a lot of things in common with. And like all of the coolest people um, tend to kind of move on and just because it's not a great fit for them or whatever, like their circumstances. So, um, you know, I'm trying to like stop guarding myself because the cool people are going to leave and just like commit to, you know, establishing some of those relationships and letting it be okay to have friends at work and participating in things and helping start things and all that sort of thing. So. You know, the That's problem good. is about news resolutions. It's just really hard to like do shit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, I always feel like I'm barely doing anything. Like everything that I'm doing is just like, I'm so close to not doing this in favor of sleeping. <laughs> like, everything. It's just like, yeah. I could eat dinner or I could go to have a nap. I was like, I could go to work or I could call in sick and just sleep all day. You know, like, <laughs> like I could yeah. go have a shower or I'll just put it off until after I sleep the whole night. And then you wake up and you're like, I'm just going to go fucking back to sleep because yeah, I woke up early for a shower and now I don't give a shit. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I think what I'm saying is I'm just really tired and that's why I don't change. So it's just like real fucking tired. But like, I Snorlax is my spirit animal. Yeah. It used to be like I would eat until I was tired and then I would go to sleep and wake up and eat until I was tired. And that was my like cycle of being yeah. and it, it and it lasted for so long. And it was weird because like I grew up like that and nobody ever pointed it out to me, you know. Mm -hmm. And then when I decided that gaming was my hobby instead of anything else. Like that didn't work, you know, and so I'm just like right. gaining weight and gaining weight and gaining weight. And I'm like, why? <laughs> like I'd literally sit down and I'd open like a bag of like mini chocolate bars. I'd be like, why am I so fat? <laughs> um, and now I'm tired because I'm like actually going out and doing shit. I mean, I'm still not being healthy or anything like that, but yeah. I'm, I'm certainly not eating stuff. And I, you know, going vegan really helps with junk food. Cause there just isn't any that you can have. Yeah. And, uh, That's a good thing. It's just out of reach. Just yeah, talking with pretty much. So you can't just go to your 7-Eleven or whatever and be like, I'll just eat all the vegan chocolate bars here. It's like, no, you won't. You won't. Rich, you won't. The candy aisle gives you the snap. Yeah, pretty oh, much. Oh, no, does. you don't. It's like, oh, we don't say kind lady, you're kind. Here, honey. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. The chocolate is talking to you because I'm so high. Yeah. It happens. Um, I'm with Chad on this, though. Like, I, I also don't sleep nearly as much and it's mostly because of video games i definitely like but I'm, i've always been a night person which you have too right yeah it's one of the things we have in common so i've always been a night person and i always like want to like that's that's the majority of time that you get for your own personal recreation in the day and it's there's never enough of that right you have to spend so much time throughout the day doing everything but what you want to do that when you finally get to the part where you actually get to do what you want to do that it's like you kind of grab and hold and like refuse to give it up. At least me, this is like, I just like, oh, I just grab it and I hold it and I drag along behind it and I won't let it go. And then it's 3 a.m. Yep. on Thursday night and I uh, have just built a brand new base in Subnautica from scratch that I shouldn't have done that night because now it's 3 a.m. and I have to get up at seven. So good job. <laughs> it just, it sucks. Cause like fun is like the most important thing in your whole life because I don't know when I'm on my friggin' deathbed and I'm looking back on my life. I don't want to be like, Oh man, I wish that I had had more fun and, you know, not done so much stuff that sucked and prevented me from having fun. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't want that. But at the yeah. same time, it's like, you can't really have fun unless you're like, well rested. For it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because oh, like I, I believe in what Techie said and, and Chad as well, that like there's just nothing more awesome than the feeling of waking up after a full night's sleep. Yeah. It is so right back to the refreshing, right? Like that that perfect drink right when you need it for the, the perfect amount of refreshment. It's a drink you've had a billion times before or whatever. But in that moment, it's so much better, right? Yeah. That's like 
like there, there are unique things in this life. And I think one of them is not only waking up from a full night's sleep, but for me, it's like sleeping uninterrupted comfortably and waking up naturally, not to an alarm, not to being woken up by anything in particular, just waking up. Man. When was the last time you've done that? When I was really sick after BlizzCon. <laughs> <laughs> Man, which is not, you know, that eliminates the comfort part, right? Yeah, so that doesn't, still, that, yeah. yeah, that doesn't. Those are, those are some golden, that's a, that's a golden circle of factors that is hard to attain, you know, unless you have, uh, unless uh, you're in a circumstance where all of uh, everything around you is within your control, right? Yeah, and that's the dream, right? Like, I'm, I'm hustling pretty hard so that, and I, I'm lucky that I do, I actually do have a job that I love. Um, it's just everything else that comes with it is hard to, hard to deal with and it just goes to show that like nothing is perfect, you know, you can never have it all. But uh, I don't know, just like, I can't even be mad. Like I'll watch like really rich YouTubers just doing their shit, buying shit, going on trips what like being extravagant and ridiculous and and i can't even be mad you know and i can't be jealous because you know there is some hustle yeah. involved with content creation like we know that yeah. and they just you know hit it big time and like good you know and yep. if people want to watch you be extravagant then be extravagant but you know if people want to like watch you wake up at 12 and like get ready for your day of shopping and going to like rodeo drive and having dinner and stuff fucking do it I'm watching because I can't, yeah. you know? I'm like, that's not necessarily the lifestyle that I'd want anyway, but I'm just saying, like, it, it, the struggle to be in charge of your own life in every aspect is, like, that's the dream, you know, for most mm -hmm. people. Just, you know, dictating when you go to sleep and when you wake up, and then in those hours, like, you only do what you love, and somehow that supports you, and you make money doing that, like. Yeah. God, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, I'm. See, I'm totally in the in the whole like office space mindset of if I were rich kind of thing. It's like, what would you do? Nothing. I would do a whole lot of nothing. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think that I could do nothing. I would have to create something. Yeah, but I, what I mean is like, I. I would want to do things like contribute to society and have charities and things like that. But I wouldn't want those, I wouldn't want to use my money to set those things up and employ people to propagate them. I would not want to be the one out, out there being in charge of it, being fully involved and that sort of thing. I would want to know that I'm contributing that stuff and that sort of thing is going. I would want to know that things like finances are taken care of and that like whatever investments are sound and whatever, and I'd have monthly meetings or whatever the hell it is that rich people do to manage their money and shit like that but I wouldn't want to be like actively involved in watching that stuff and like nitpicking it and things like that. That's what I mean is like, if I'm going to be busy, I would be busy with like my own pursuits. Yeah. That's what I mean by nothing. Fucking <laughs> you've got people working for you and doing shit and, and that's fine. And then you've got people making sure that they're doing their shit and you're just like supplying funds yeah. but all day long. You're fucking sitting in your like fucking awesome chair with your souped up gaming rig and you've got a mini fridge and a fucking mini freezer, a little microwave, whatever. And then you're just fucking playing games all day. And yeah. you're naked because you can just like drip <laughs> off whenever you want. And since you're rich, people want to come over and do it for you. Yeah. <laughs> like that's the dream. Yeah. Like all you literally have to do is be like, hey guys, BRB, uh, bio and then you like lean back and then you know whoever you hire to come in and touch you comes on in then the capri sun gives you the suck exactly you can even call her or him capri these are, sun if you want these are my two hoes capri and sun yeah <laughs> this capri sun and sunny d the d stands for dick <laughs> bet you didn't see that coming nope oh no pulp <laughs> <laughs> pulp just gets Ew. could you imagine like dick pulp we won't because no, i just why? did it was awful don't why did you do that, that. don't do I'm that sorry that would be a weird condition let's keep this a pulp free lb stream okay lb stream now pulp free 
Sunny D was good, but oh god, did it make me sick. And then I like look at it, like look at the ingredients, and it's like 500 grams of sugar, and you're like, oh, no wonder it's the tastiest orange juice. <laughs> it's literally just sugar water. Isn't that always the way? I think the strangest ingredient in anything that I ever discovered, like well after having consumed it many times, was Slim Jims. Remember Slim Jims? That, like a meat stick? Yes. It's the meat sticks that like Macho Man Randy Savage was the spokesperson for. Oh yeah, I'll snap it to a Slim Jim. <laughs> Maybe no? that was, I, I'm foreign, no. I don't know. <laughs> you had American TV. Anyway. Slim Jims, the very first ingredient on a Slim Jim is mechanically separated chicken. No. Which is disgusting no matter what your background is. Yeah. <laughs> what a fucking strange, strange ingredient. That's gross. If I were rich though, like back to the whole rich thing, um, if you've ever seen the movie The Jerk, Steve Martin's character gets rich and just goes like way off the deep end with like the rich, stupid, ridiculous shit. And then at one point they show him like walking along with like, a, a, like a pipe that blows bubbles and like ridiculous glasses and this like like Errol Flynn Robin Hood type hat with a gigantic feather way off the back that goes way back like two feet behind him. He's wearing like like a pimpin' robe and like some slippers or whatever and he's walking along with his arms behind his back and there's like four or five people following him and like giving him updates on his rich person status stuff which is what I totally like picture, you know, you employ all these people, they do all the stuff for you and you just of be course. rich. <laughs> Honestly, like I've only ever been uh, with expendable yes, income once in my whole life. Uh, it was very brief and it just, it all of the stars were aligning for a couple of months. And I had like more jobs and more income than I needed. And so I just kind of sure. did that. And I didn't know what to do. Uh, I bought myself a really expensive necklace. And then after that, I just kind of still didn't know what to do. So I uh, don't download this app, guys, but it's called the Wish app. And it's just oh God. <laughs> millions and millions of dollar store items from China. And you just go through and you look at all these things and you put your credit card on the thing. And then you just order and order and order. Like they've got knockoff Blizzard stuff like crazy, which is the majority of the stuff I got. But then I started getting weird shit like crystals and candles and like scarves and jewelry and like bullshit. Just just knickknacks. I just yeah. I spent hundreds of dollars on knickknacks. And I don't wear jewelry. I don't like knickknacks, but like. I'd, I'd never had the the feeling of like money burning a hole in my pocket ever before because I grew up poor and then, you know, I, I was still poor and then I went to fucking school for theater for some fucking reason. So then I became a content creator <laughs> and like I've been poor forever and for a few months I was not that poor and all I fucking did was by junk and I still have all this junk in boxes and it's horrible and I look at it and I I kind of like it was it was a it was a, a lesson learning experience for me like if I ever have the opportunity to like have expendable income again I'm gonna like think back I'm gonna open the box of crap and be like don't do that don't do it. Like, <laughs> just like shake it at yourself yeah. don't do don't do it. That'll be me. But yeah. I don't know. If you got if you got rich today, like if you picked up a lotto ticket like yesterday and you just like we finished the stream and you go check the numbers and you're like, holy fucking shit, I just won five hundred million dollars. And let's say magically it just appeared in your account, you already have it. What's the very first thing you would do with that? The first thing. The first thing right now. Click, stream is over, because that's how you do it, right? You you click okay. the stream, and then it's over? Yeah. That's how we end it, right? Yeah. Click, stream is over. Um, oh, man, I really should check and see if that if I paid that one bill. You go check your bank account. Boom, $500 million and, and $230 or whatever you actually have in your account right now. Like so it's the $500 million plus the 200 Yeah. Right now? Right now. What's uh, the first thing you do? My favorite band is playing a show in Los Angeles tomorrow. 
Oh. That's what I'd do. I'd be like, all right, I need <laughs> a bitchin' outfit and I need to get on a plane and go to LA. I need to stay really close to the venue in the best place possible. I'm gonna stay there for like a week. And even if all the tickets are sold out, I will donate like thousands of dollars to the band and they can do what they want with it. And I just wanna go and I just wanna be there. That's what I would do. Nice. That's exactly what, what band? I band? Uh, twerp. Nice. Oh God, I would just, I would love. And then uh, I'd come back and start packing up all my shit and I'd move to California. Where in California? I don't know, probably Los Angeles. Oh, nice. and then I'd like, I'd go to all the fucking like Overwatch League games. Oh man. Oh, I'd buy my mom a boat or something. I would like, yeah, I'd hire the raid team to be my entourage. That nice. Means, that means you too. So you would come with. Awesome. Oh, hell yes. That's what I'm and always telling the guys. I'm always telling the raid team, like, I only trust you guys. If I was rich, you would be my entourage. I would pay you to be my friend and just hang out with me. <laughs> That's like the greatest, like for whoever knows a famous person and gets to just be a hanger on um, entourage person. Like I, I cannot imagine what that's like to actually be a member of someone's entourage. Like, you think Snoop Dogg goes anywhere alone? No. I mean, may, I mean, he's a little older now. Like, he's a, like a family man and shit. He's doing like commercials. Are you with saying Martha Snoop Stewart doesn't have an like. entourage? Because Snoop no, no, no. Has an entourage. I'm not saying that at all. Nor am I saying that Snoop's not cool. Because Snoop is cool as shit. Don't get me wrong. What I'm saying is, young Snoop definitely had an entourage exactly the way that we're talking about <laughs> young snoop had like all his friends from his neighborhood or whatever <laughs> who were just like all around him all the time but like i've always thought of that so that's so that's a really interesting situation in a in a supremely unique one right if you become famous so that's different than being rich okay change in scenario you're no longer a lottery winner but you put out a song on the internet that went huge and then a record company just picked you up and your advance is something ridiculous like you know two million or something like that Whatever, enough to be rich, but now you're famous also, right? So uh, now your fame is going to make you much even more richer, right? So even more richer, even more rich, richer. Your fame is gonna make you richer. Point is, you're not famous and now you have an entourage to match. So like, how the, how the fuck do you choose? I think choose is easy because that's just like your favorite people, people you can stand the most, the people you like the most, all that sort of thing, right? As a, as a baseline, but then like, how do you pay them? Um, I think that I would assign a task to each one of my friends that I know that they would be good at, but would also not be like too taxing on them. Cause like, what's the point of being in somebody's entourage as a profession, if it's going to be a hard job, like that, that's, that shouldn't be, you know, like yeah. dealing with me being rich and famous would be a tough job enough. I'm sure. Cause it would all go to my head. And then I'd like be on my phone all night trying to order fucking bullshit from china and somebody would have to like flip my phone out of my hands and be like this stop ordering bullshit and i'd be like but they've got this soap dispenser made out of plastic and it looks like tits and you stick it onto your shower wall with suction cups and then you squeeze them and the soap comes out and they're like all right get it but then no more <laughs> they really do have that though I just didn't get it because it was like 12 bucks, but whatever. From where? From the Wish app. Don't get that app. That's oh, nice. Highly addictive. But anyway, um, yeah, like I would Winchester just. Winchester said that he would become, if he had that kind of money, he'd just become Batman, which, God damn it. Like, I, I wanted discussion out of this, Winchester. I didn't need you to just give us the Trump, the, the Trump card answer that Trump's all, that is like the only yeah. real answer. Anybody <laughs> can be Batman if, you know, they have enough money and their parents get murdered. Jesus. Which you could also do with lots of money. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, not every rich, okay, eccentric rich. person can be Batman. <laughs> like, you have to have, like, that spark, you know? Like, that, the the, the drive, the, the, the... Idea. Okay. Here's how you get the drive and spark. You not only choose your entourage, because now you're rich and famous and or just rich, whatever. You choose your entourage, but then you also choose your your like arch enemies your arch nemeses while you're at it 
You choose all your favorite people to be in your entourage and you choose all the worst people who you hate the most, pay them a bunch too, to go do horrible things to motivate you. Or you just pay other people to do horrible things to the people you hate and then you watch. What? <laughs> and then you are the one who is evil. <laughs> I think I'm a villain. With I think you that. are. And that was just like the most adorable, most villainous thing I've ever seen. I just like, thought it would be better. I could get uh, <laughs> like a degree. I could become a doctor of something. And then I'd be like Dr. Thist. And then I'd be like a villain. I don't have many like enemies, but holy shit, would I bother mine? That'd be great. <laughs> not, not, you know, like nothing super mean or anything, but just like, I don't know. You know how you can send people like dog poop? Yeah. In the mail? I would yeah. definitely do that to people I don't like. Like yeah, 100% absolutely would do that. It'd be other poop. <laughs> It would be wonderful because they like they wrap that all up so it's like you know you don't actually have to touch it or smell it but you know what it is yeah or a glitter bomb I would love to send a glitter bomb to people I hate oh you god that guy like started the business to do that and it blew up so big that he had he like couldn't handle it and was like immediately looking to sell it because he just wanted to get the, get it the hell away from him yeah do you remember that yeah that was like recent that was like a couple of years ago god, I would love to do that that kind of stuff you know because then you're making yeah. like a strong message but like you don't even have to put your name on it if you don't want because then the person mm -hmm. opening up is like oh fuck somebody hates me maybe i should strive to be a better person do you think that would change you well see that's an unfair question because you're already kind of a good person aside from the whole villainy thing not really see people get that wrong i'm actually just a huge asshole so if you and so if you got like some actual feces in the mail that would change you from your asshole ways yes Shut I up. would never be an asshole again. No way. <laughs> <laughs> this the product of the asshole that I have received here is changing me from my asshole ways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Anyway, New Year's resolution. Uh uh death to my enemies. <laughs> Did I say death? I meant uh dog shit. Or glitter. Or both. Glittery dog shit. Okay. What do you think would be worse? What, glittery dog shit or what? No, like glitter, oh, glitter, or glitter bomb shit. or yeah. I feel like a glitter bomb would be worse because that would take a long time to clean up. It depends though. Like, so for example, in, in my house, I have a hardwood floor and it's very likely that either the hardwood floor that's just inside my door Probably. or the tiles in my kitchen are the two most likely places where I'm opening my mail. In which case, I'm going to open a shit ton of glitter. That's going to make a fucking mess. Don't get me wrong. But then I'm just going to sweep it up and be done with it. Yeah, but Whereas, you don't understand glitter. Like micro glitter, that stays around forever. I'm not saying that it's not going to still be around. I'm just saying it's not going to be that big a deal. Whereas if I received shit, I, f I definitely feel like I'd be I'd be doing some thinking. Like, I'm, but I'm a pretty self-reflective guy. I, I could see other people receiving shit and just be like, hey, what the, f what is this? How, what the, you know, and then just being like. Would you start like wildly accusing of people of sending you poop? Yeah, yeah. Just like, I, I know you, you did it. It's like, I didn't do it. Rage. Yeah. <laughs> and I'd be like, Techie Taco, <laughs> was it you? Why him yes. first? Why was it you? Me? Yes, it was me. Who else would do it? <laughs> My arch nemesis. It's me. Ha ha ha. The villainous. The, the villainous fist. What can I say? Fist villainous. It's always who you least expect. <laughs> no one expects the butterfly. Exactly. That's why I'm so good at being evil. Nobody <laughs> knows. Even now, people are like, she's totally joking. <laughs> Am I? I did go to school for theater. Am I acting? <laughs> you'll never know until it's too late. <laughs> then you'll be covered in shit and glitter. And it won't even be dog shit either. It'll be my own. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Vegans don't poop. That's silly. If you were, um, if, like, would you just use whatever, like, there is a service for sending shit, right? Yeah. Is that what you said? Yeah. So would you use that service or would you, yeah. like, see, I feel like I'd have to add my own flair to it. I feel like I'd have it, 
I'd have it sent by like singing telegram or something ridiculous. That's like You're high profile. An asshole. Here's yeah. your shit. You piece of shit. Here's yeah, but- some more for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bent. You yeah. giant chungus. Exactly. Because then there's like nothing compared to mine. <laughs> I've exactly. got massive chunks. Even after I empty them, they're still bigger than yours. <laughs> a chung is the poop sack? I don't know. Chung is, chungus is everything. <laughs> chungus. I'm sorry. It's a new meme. I'm just trying it out. No, I know. I, that's, that's cool. I'm glad you're, you're feeling your own. You know what's weird? I was talking to somebody today and they were like complimenting me on like my knowledge of memes. And I said something like, well, you know, I am in the meme business now. And like, I am in the meme business now. They really are. Like that's most of my job is esport and gaming memes and Mm -hmm. how I use them and create them. And like, like, I knew that, but I never really thought about it. And I yeah. thought about it today, and I was just like, I'm in the memeing business. And then I thought of myself with, like, a big cigar, <laughs> and, uh, like a briefcase, and I'm walking down the streets of New York. I'm like, out of the way, kid. I got memes. To yeah. Harvest. I'm, I'm memes. in the memeing business. <laughs> Get out of my way, you know? And it's funny, because, like, that's literally, like, I, I'm not, like, pushing people, usually. And I don't have a briefcase. Uh, what else did I say I was holding? Like a walking stick, a cane, some kind of, I don't know. A cigar? Uh, yeah, a cigar. And I'm not, I'm not smoking a cigar or anything, but it's just, I don't know. It's just like, like I'm an old-timey newsie, except I'm a, I'm, I'm a Mimi. <laughs> a Mimi? Yeah. That's my mom's <laughs> That's how you pronounce it, right? Mimi? She's like, oh, you're going to be working with Mimis? And I'm like, oh, God, oh. Mom. Oh, dear. Why you know? <laughs> Oh no, but yeah. Out of my way, kid. We got memes. memes. <laughs> Fresh like hot the, memes. Um, like the the bad boss meme? Kind of like that guy? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah, it's all very ridiculous. But it's like, it's so legit, you know? Because like people love memes. People respond to memes. People want to see them. Yeah. So that's what you do. You make a business out of stuff that people want. Like I work in the same office for with the people who do uh, so satisfying, and all day long they're like getting content of people like making slime, and like squeezing balloons full of glitter, and like cutting into cake with shit inside of it. Not literally, or like you know squeezing foam. You know, like people love that shit, and that's their whole job. Yeah, insane, but it makes sense. Cause like I want to see that sometimes. Yeah. I want to see a really hot knife go through a bar of soap. I want to see what happens. You, you want to see hot knives tonight? Ooh, Local it. utensils are interested in you. Yeah. <laughs> you want to see somebody scrape up a bar of soap with an exacto knife? Yeah, you do. <laughs> Lots of people do. Like, well, we got it. it. Yeah. I think you might need to move your mic up. This one? No, no, your big mic. Oh, these are one. That's the one you're on, by the way. Oh, I had no idea. That's the one you've been on this whole time. Cool. (laughs) Yeah. So. (laughs) God, we are so good. We are, yeah. We didn't even really talk about resolutions. Oh, we did. I've got them. Um, So here are the resolutions that we have decided on. Okay. We decided on uh, during tonight's stream. Um, change the LB stream show name. Okay. Wait. Yes. Okay. Okay. Change the show name. Right. Got it. Find beverages more refreshing. I will certainly try. Okay. Right. Um, streamline the stream. So yes. That there, there's less technical issues. We just suck at it so right. much. Yes. Well, not so much. I mean, we're better, but like it still could use some streamlining, right? So we really um, need more work. The next resolution is to go pulp free. Yes. We don't like pulp. No. I don't like stuff in my drinks. Mm-mm. Even when I used to get bulba tea, like I wouldn't get the bulbas or whatever the hell they're called. The tapioca pearls. I thought it was bubble tea. 
It's not the same Maybe thing. Maybe it is. I have no fucking idea. I don't know what I'm talking about. Don't, don't, yeah, whatever. Um, <clears throat> the next resolution is death and or dog shit to my enemies. All right. I could do that. Yep. I mean, wait, was I supposed to add glitter to that? Uh, no, I think this shit will be fine. Okay. And then the most recent one is hot knife action. So, hot you know, we've got a solid list here, honestly. I'm pretty solid right now, too. All that talk about revenge. Yeah. Revenge boners. Ooh. It's a real thing. It really is. Like, I've never, I've only ever done, like, retaliation type of stuff a couple of times in my life. Yeah? And, like yeah. what? Like what? Uh, I don't want to talk about it. I'm sh- <laughs> well, no, because listen, like, I'm ashamed of it, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I've only ever done it a couple times in my life. And each time it's happened, it happened because I was so angry or upset that I did something stupid. And then it feels good in the moment. But then, you know, an hour later, I'm riddled with guilt. I get that. Because I'm, I can't, you know? Yeah. Or uh, can I? You'll never know. But uh, <laughs> Is she acting right now, guys? Is she? Is she lying? But like, that's why, I mean, that could be a resolution. Like, I've already, I think, kind of achieved it. But like, don't act when you're angry. You know, never act when you're angry. Unless you have to, of course. But like, if it's something petty, like if something petty comes to your mind while you're angry, just sit on it for a little bit. Wait until you've cooled down a little bit and then, you know, ask yourself if it seems like still, you know, a good idea. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Sometimes revenge is awesome and people really, really do yeah. deserve it. But like, you just, you kind of have to like, think of like, what is the repercussion going to be like? Yeah. I think that's the biggest part. It's like, and not even like, oh, okay, so if I, you know, go and stick a pie in this person's face. Like, am I going to feel bad about it later? Like, if you don't, if you genuinely right. don't care yeah. about the person, like, think yeah. of yourself, like, am I going to feel bad later? Yep. Like, am I going to regret I have an this example of that, actually. Tell me. My most recent act of petty, petty, minor, stupid, silly revenge was exactly that. Something where, <clears throat> like, this guy at work, I don't like, he, uh, He's the kind of person who's like always pushing his responsibilities off on other people and making things difficult for them. Um, even when it's outright something that is in his area. And this was one of those, those situations. So he asked for something of my group and decided that the best time to send a sassy email about us not having gotten it done yet, which by the way, this was a very low priority for our area. It's to him. It might've been something that actually mattered. Um, but he asked for it once and it took longer than he thought it should. So he sent this really bitchy email about it. And it, it included language like, just as an, as an easy example, just so you know that it wasn't just my interpretation of him being a dick about this. It was language like, this is taking longer than it should. Which is an extremely loaded statement when you were aiming that at somebody else's group because you don't know what it takes to get those things done. So you can have an opinion on that, but to state that as a fact is a dick move. So that's the kind of guy that this guy is. And he's just kind of like not particularly liked, um, not even by me, uh, beyond, beyond just me. Anyway, point is, he decides to send this email, follow-up email, where he, where he decided to be a dick, right before Thanksgiving. And when I mean right before Thanksgiving, I mean the day before Thanksgiving, after 5 p.m. So he sends it to my direct report, and he copies me on it. This is after, you know, the day before a holiday, people are generally going home on time versus like staying later or whatever. So by now, myself and the entire team, we're all gone. We are, we are gone for the day. Day is over. We're already in holiday mode, that sort of thing. This is the time that he decides to send this bitch ass email, which in essence was calling out my direct report in front of me by copying me on it. Now, here's the part where it gets iffy. He sends this bitch ass message, copies me on it. Uh, presumably to get my direct report in trouble or just be a dick or whatever his, whatever his idea was that he was trying to accomplish. Three months earlier, six months earlier, six months earlier than that, I had asked him to do something that is related to his area for an event that our company did. He was supposed to finalize something and then 
write these things up about what something that we did there that only he could do because it was only his area, right? It's not something else that that something else or something that somebody else could have done for him. It's specifically his duty. And it's something that was important to management, important to the sales team, all those sorts of things. So I asked him for it. He said he was too busy. I asked him for it again. He said he was still on deadlines. This went on like four or five times over like a two week period. And then I finally just said, all right, man, look, management is, is asking me for this stuff. I can't do it because this is your area. So I need you to do it when you can. And he's just like, oh, okay, I'll try to be in two places at once. Ha ha ha, whatever. Another like bitch ass, like cloaked, but bitch ass kind of punk ass response. But this is not to do with me. And I figure I'll let it be until like somebody else tries to make a, a deal about it or whatever. And then I'll use that pressure to help them get it done. So fast forward six months, he sends this bitch ass message. So I answer him on it and say, hey, after the holiday, we'll, we'll push on our vendor and get this thing that you need. Then I proceed to copy his note, find the old um, email thread between he and I about this other thing that he never did, reword his letter, his note, right back at him about this other thing that he never did. And I sent it off to him. And I included a, a little note at the end, like, ha ha, couldn't resist, have a great holiday or some bullshit like that to just like give myself plausible deniability that was like a joke. But in reality, I was being a total fucking dickhead about it. Like, I thought he was being a jerk. So I was like, how do I up the ante and be even worse right back at you and let you know how it feels to receive this, this kind of email. Now I didn't go so far as to copy his like supervisor on it. Cause that's the real bitch move and all of this. But I did that. And at first I felt like, yeah, fuck that guy done, get some, whatever. And then, so my revenge part was like, yeah, fuck. Yeah. I just gave this guy a taste of his own medicine in his own fucking words, get wrecked. And then as the day wore on, I started to feel bad and I started to feel worse. And then I started to worry about it. And I was just like, ugh, that was not worth it. <laughs> it felt so good in the moment, you know? I know. It's like use some of these words, right? Like right back at them like that, but. Oh, well. Yeah. So that's my very specific example on exactly that issue. <laughs> um, so I get it. It's hard to have morals, man. It is Especially when it seems like everyone around you doesn't. Well, he doesn't. I, I don't think that he feels bad about that. I'm not sure. I bet when he looked at it, he probably like thought, oh, what a jerk or something like that. And then went on with his life and never considered it again until maybe like the next time he saw me. Whereas I agonized over that for like hours and days because then it was a holiday and I felt bad and whatever. And then the next time I saw him, I was like feeling bad. Like, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. Well. So can we, do we, do we, what's our resolution about that sort of thing? Okay. Don't make decisions while angry. Right. Yes. Okay. Got it. Unless you have to, because sometimes okay. anger can really spur you into doing things you need to do. Okay. Final list. LB stream show name, find beverages more refreshing, streamline the stream, go pulp free, death and or dog shits enemies, hot knife action, and don't make decisions while angry. All right. I'd say that was a productive stream. I'd say so too. We've really sussed some things out. Yeah, I'm glad we had this team meeting privately, just you and I and, and Techie watching to um to Techie's to always stuff. watching. Oh god, there's other people in this chat. Hi everybody. <laughs> oh, that was a terrible joke, Thorne. That was just come on. Really bad. Like we're ending this year on a high note right now. Okay, <laughs> let me adding a new resolution for this. Don't call foreign out on bad jokes while still on stream but i'm so good at it that one's for you my. Name next to it fist in parentheses that's my name <laughs> you fucker you fucking bitch <laughs> um but yeah well, so, it's the yeah. end of the stream at the end of the year end of the stream at the end of the year how well, guys, uh, I feel good. I feel accomplished. I love doing the show. I love hanging out with you guys. I don't know. This is a good time all around. Same and here. It, it always saves me from, you know, people like, oh, what are you doing on Friday night? It's like, oh, you know, I've got a show to do. So, you know, I got to cancel all the party invitations that I was, you know, uh, going to go to. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah camp party streaming <laughs> yeah so i've got so many birthday parties to go to at clubs and stuff but yeah 
you just have to, you have to stay find me in the club. Yeah. Or, or not, because I'll be at home. But yeah, so thank you guys so much. Uh, we'll yeah. have an, an episode of Lagging Balls out at some point soon. But in the meantime, I hope you guys have a really great weekend. Thank you for watching us so much. And, uh, and have a great new year. Yeah, have a great freaking new year. Yeah, whatever you're doing. We will be, I will be in, in World of Warcraft on New Year's Eve night. Nice. So if you guys are looking to hang out, that's where I'll be. Like a cool person. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. I'm going to go um, shut off the stream. Thanks to everyone. Um, do we, oh, you want to figure out where we want to throw it to while I do that? Mm -hmm. Let's Thanks, see. Oh, Mr. Taryn Gregory is streaming Assassin's Creed at the moment. Um, we're pretty good friends with Taryn. I would consider myself a friend of Taryn's. The last time I saw him in person, uh, he ran at me and tackled me and we kept walking. Well, I kept walking backwards because he was pushing forwards. And then uh, we ran into my raid team. And that's how a lot of them met Taryn. So we should go. We should go raid Taryn Gregory. Tell him Lagging Balls sent you. Or something. That'd be nice. But in the meantime, have a great weekend, guys. We love you so much.